Hello everybody and welcome to the last video of the acid-based disturbances series which is approach to acid-based disturbances. Now if you recall from our previous videos we had the four main disturbances which are metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis and again any of those could be either primary or secondary which is also known as compensatory because it occurs as a compensation to the primary disturbance and in general the primary metabolic disturbances will have a secondary respiratory compensation and vice versa which is primary respiratory disturbances will have a secondary metabolic compensation and finally inadequate compensation or overcompensation could indicate another primary acid-based disorder which is also known as a mixed acid-based disorder because two primary disorders will be occurring simultaneously great now let's move to the algorithm on how to approach to acid-based disturbance and the first thing of course is to identify the primary disturbance by looking at the pH the pCO2 and the bicarbonate level so let's start looking at the pH and the pH of course could be either low which means acidosis or high which means alkalosis so let's first finish with the acidosis and then we'll move to the alkalosis so now with the acidosis we will now have to look at the two other parameters which are the PCO2 and the bicarbonate and in order for the acidosis to happen you will need either a low bicarbonate or a high PCO2 and based on our previous videos in order to have a low bicarbonate that means you have a primary metabolic acidosis and when you have a high PCO2 that means you're hypoventilating and that means you have a primary respiratory acidosis and the expected compensation rates are written here below but we will come to that shortly now on the other hand for an alkalosis to happen that means you either have a high bicarbonate or a low PCO2 which means hyperventilating and for a high bicarbonate to exist that means that you have a primary metabolic alkalosis and for a low PCO2 to occur that means you have a primary respiratory alkalosis and those are the expected compensation rates which we will explain shortly great so now let's start talking about the compensations and we'll start looking at the primary metabolic acidosis and when you have that metabolic acidosis you will have definitely a drop in the bicarbonate and for every one unit drop in bicarbonate we will expect one unit drop in PCO2 because of the hyperventilation through the lungs as the lungs are trying to compensate by exhaling carbon dioxide and if you have this expected ratio of compensation then this drop in the PCO2 is known as a secondary respiratory alkalosis which is again occurring as a compensation to the primary metabolic acidosis to balance out the pH so let's have a quick example to see what that really means let's say we have a patient with the following baseline figures let's suppose the baseline bicarbonate is 24 milliequivalents per liter your baseline PCO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury and your baseline pH is 7.4 and let's say our patient has just had a metabolic acidosis let's say a diabetic ketoacidosis and the current bicarbonate is 18 your current PCO2 is 34 and your current pH is 7.34 and here your diagnosis would be a primary metabolic acidosis with a secondary respiratory alkalosis and the reason for their secondary respiratory alkalosis is that your decrease in the PCO2 is appropriate to the decrease in bicarbonate and you can notice that every one unit drop in bicarbonate is matched by one unit drop and PCO2 and your pH is not really normal but it's slightly acidotic and that means that your compensation is working let's take another example let's say our bicarbonate now is 18 but our PCO2 is 30 so that's kind of below the expected level of compensation and our pH is 7.4 so our pH is normal and if I ask you the following what is your diagnosis in this second patient and the answer is a mixed primary metabolic acidosis and primary respiratory alkalosis and the reason for the primary metabolic acidosis of course is the drop in the bicarbonate and the reason for the primary respiratory alkalosis is the drop in PCO2 more than expected as a compensation for the drop in the bicarbonate so that indicates that your lungs are kind of hyperventilating in the first place and it's not just the acidosis which is causing them to hyperventilate and finally you can notice that the pH is now normal which is usual in mixed acid based disturbances because if you have a compensation alone then your pH shouldn't really reach the normal level as we have seen in the previous example where the pH has only reached 7.34 not 7.4 and this blood gas picture of a mixed primary metabolic acidosis and primary 
secondary respiratory alkalosis is usually seen later on in phase 3 of salicylate poisoning. And finally, let's take a final example. Let's say our bicarbonate is 18, your PCO2 is 37, and your pH is 7.29. And your diagnosis here would be a mixed primary metabolic acidosis and primary respiratory acidosis. And the reason is, the drop in PCO2 doesn't really match the drop in the bicarbonate. You should have one unit decrease in PCO2 per one unit decrease in bicarbonate. And since the decrease in PCO2 is too small, that means there's something wrong with the lungs and they're not able to hyperventilate as a compensation, such as in patients with COPD. Great, now let's move to our second acid-based disturbance, which is the primary respiratory acidosis. And those are the expected values for compensation. And the compensation in primary respiratory acidosis is divided into acute and chronic compensations, with the acute one being in the first three days, and the chronic one in approximately three to five days. And the compensation here, of course, is called the secondary metabolic alkalosis, which primarily occurs through the kidneys. And with the same story repeated as in primary metabolic acidosis, if the increase in bicarbonate carbonate is too high for the increase in PCO2, whether in acute or chronic compensation, that means you have a mixed acid-base disturbance with a primary respiratory acidosis and a primary metabolic alkalosis. On the other hand, if your increase in the bicarbonate is too small for the increase in PCO2, that means you have a mixed disturbance with a primary respiratory acidosis and a primary metabolic acidosis. And now with a third acid-base disturbance, which is primary metabolic alkalosis, and this is the experience expected compensation ratio between PCO2 and bicarbonate. And that's for every 10 units increase in bicarbonate, you should have approximately 5 to 7 units increase in PCO2 as a compensation through the lungs by hypoventilating. And that is called secondary respiratory acidosis. And again, if your increase in PCO2 is too high, more than 5 to 7 units for every 10 units increase in bicarbonate, that means you have a mixed primary metabolic alkalosis and primary respiratory acidosis. On the other hand, if your increase in the PCO2 is too small for the increase in the bicarbonate, that means you have a mixed disturbance of primary metabolic alkalosis and primary respiratory alkalosis. And finally, with the last acid-based disturbance, which is the primary respiratory alkalosis, and again, we have the acute and the chronic, depending on the number of days, and they occur primarily through the kidneys. And this is called a secondary metabolic acidosis. And again, if you decrease in the bicarbonate, whether in acute or chronic, is more than the decrease in PCO2, that means you have a mixed disturbance with a primary respiratory alkalosis and primary metabolic acidosis. On the other hand, if your decrease in bicarbonate is too small for the decrease in PCO2, that means you have a mixed primary respiratory alkalosis and a primary metabolic alkalosis, which is not able to decrease the bicarbonate. Perfect. Now, there's one last point that I want to mention in order to reach near perfection in the classification of the acid-base disturbances. What if our pH were normal? Does that mean that you have a normal patient and there's nothing wrong with the acid bases or there's a concealed acid-base disturbance? And the answer is, it could be any one of the three things. The first is, you don't have any disturbance and you have a normal patient with a normal pH. The second possibility is to have a mixed disturbance, which is balancing out the pH, such as having a mixed primary metabolism metabolic acidosis and the primary respiratory alkalosis, for example, and this will inappropriately return the pH to normal. And the third possibility, which is unlikely, is to have a primary acid-base disturbance with appropriate compensation. And this is unlikely because usually the compensation will not really return the pH to normal, but rather near to normal, except for some cases of respiratory alkalosis and respiratory acidosis, which actually return the pH to normal with appropriate metabolic compensation. All right, fantastic. Now let's quickly review what we have just said. The first step in our approach is to identify the primary disturbance using the pH, the PCO2, and the bicarbonate levels. And the second thing we should do is to evaluate for the compensation. And if the compensation were not appropriate, whether inadequate or overcompensated, that means there's another primary acid-based disturbance, which is also known as a mixed acid-based disorder. And our third step is that we should calculate the plasma anion gap, especially if we have a metabolic acid acidosis as it helps in differentiating high anion gap from normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. And not only that, but also there's something called as the anion gap to bicarbonate ratio, which could tell us a little bit more information. If, for example, if you have a patient with a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, and you see that the increase in the anion gap is less than what it's supposed to be 
with this decrease in bicarbonate, that means you have a coexisting normal anion gap metabolic acidosis with a primary high anion gap metabolic acidosis. On the other hand, if your increase in the anion gap is more than expected for the decrease in bicarbonate, that means you have a coexisting primary metabolic alkalosis with the primary high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And to find out more details about the anion gap, please visit the metabolic acidosis video. And the last thing we should look for is the osmolar gap. And just to give you a few points about what the osmolar gap is, the osmolar gap is the measured osmolality minus the calculated osmolality. And the calculated osmolality is calculated using the plasma concentration of the sodium, the urea, and the glucose. And normally the osmolar gap is less than 10, and it is particularly particularly useful in the treatment of methanol and ethylene glycol poisonings as it helps in the management options. And one final point, please check the normal values for the different parameters, whether it is the pH or the bicarbonate or the PCO2 or the osmolar gap or the anion gap, etc. Please check them in your laboratory as the normal ranges differ from lab to lab. This is all for the approach to acid-based disturbances. I really hope that you've liked this video. And this video will conclude our series on electrolyte abnormalities and acid-based disturbances. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you a great day ahead.